We'd previously covered the detailed history of Skid Row, the link is down below. But today, I want to talk about the Skid Row Bon Jovi feud that escalated with punches being thrown while both bands were on tour together. That's what we're going to explore in today's video. Skid Row guitarist Dave Snake Sabo would grow up in New Jersey alongside John Bon Jovi. Both of them had aspirations of being rock stars, with each of them promising to help one another if either of them got famous. Skid Row, which formed in 1986, was a few years younger than Bon Jovi, who had already established themselves as one of the biggest rock bands on the planet, thanks to the success of their record 1986 A Slippery When Wet. Skid Row would be made up of frontman Sebastian Bach, guitarist Dave Snake Sabo, as well as Scotty Hill, bassist Rachel Bolin, and drummer Rob Afuso. The band would be managed by Doc McGee, who also managed Bon Jovi. Ahead of Skid Row signing with Atlantic Records, John Bon Jovi and his guitarist Richie Sambora would own a publishing company called Underground, who convinced the members of Skid Row to sign with them. As a result, the Bon Jovi pair would own a lion's share of Skid Row's publishing. Skid Row would release their debut album, which was self-titled in 1989, and it would be a massive success moving over 5 million copies, thanks to the top 10 singles 18 in Life and I Remember You. As part of the promotion for the record, Skid Row would open for Bon Jovi as part of their New Jersey tour the same year. That publishing deal the band signed with John and Richie became a sour point for frontman Sebastian Bach. Bach would tell a French TV outlet, nobody thought we would become a big band. That happens all the time in the music industry. John was like, we'll take you on tour, but if you guys make it big, then he gets a cut of it. So I was bitter about that for a while, he would say. But it would be another event that created a rivalry between both bands. According to Bach's book, 18 in Life, it was when Skid Row's merchandise started to outsell the headliner that John Bon Jovi took exception, with Bach recalling in his book that he was summoned into a room by the Bon Jovi frontman writing, and I quote, he stared me down and said the words, I'll effing own you. Bach would also claim that during the tail end of their tour with Bon Jovi, both bands would play pranks on one another. Ahead of one of Skid Row's final sets in Kentucky, Bon Jovi's entourage soaked Bach with ice milk, which left Bach pretty furious, who slammed Bon Jovi when he went up on stage. Skid Row's crew responded by throwing a carton of eggs at Bon Jovi's crew. It was as Skid Row walked off stage that Bon Jovi's crew were waiting for him with Bach writing in his book, we saw about 60 people coming towards us. Leading the pack was John Bon Jovi himself, flanking him side to side was his dad and his brother Tony, behind them was the full Bon Jovi road crew. John would end up throwing a punch at Bach that missed, Bon Jovi's entourage would throw Bach into the dressing room and throw him up against the wall. With Bach writing, Bon Jovi Sr. pointed in my face as I was held against the wall. He said, I'll effing kill you or something like that. Bach would claim to Louder Sound that after the incident, he received congratulatory phone calls from Lars Ulrich of Metallica and Axl Rose of Guns N' Roses for his actions. But for his bandmates, it put them in a difficult position with Sabo telling Louder Sound. John had freaked out because he thought Sebastian had called him an expletive, but the whole thing was a misunderstanding. And because my singer hadn't done anything wrong, I had to defend him amid all this mudslinging. Sabo, for his part, would have a strained relationship with John for several years. It would finally be healed when the pair attended the funeral of a mutual friend. Both John and Richie would eventually relax their rights to Skid Row's publishing under the condition that Bach signed a gag order according to Louder Sound. It was years later, either in the late 2000s or 2010s, when Bach, who was no longer in Skid Row, was touring with Guns N' Roses and having dinner one night with frontman Axl Rose at a restaurant in London that he mended fences with John. Bach would tell a French publication, and I quote, the waitress says, hey, guess who's over there in the corner? And me and Axel go, who? She said, John Bon Jovi, and I go, get the F out of here. He was in the corner. I didn't know what to do, because we had words. Most of them were mine. So I go, you know what, F this, I'm gonna go over there and say hi, cause we used to be great, great friends. I had Christmas dinner at his house and stuff. He's looking at me, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna say? And I was like, hey man, how's it going? And he was like, hey man, and we stood up and we hugged. And then he came over to me and Axel's table and we drank about 15 bottles of red wine, had a great time. It was also by strange coincidence that John had said some unflattering words about Rose, complaining how the reclusive frontman gets more press than he does, but it seemed to be water under the bridge. Bach would look back writing in his book, John took a chance on me and our band. I will always be indebted to him for that. That does it for today's video guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe. We'll see you again. Rock and roll true stories. Take care.